Something all of us use, but how's it made? With some peelings of vegetables. I don't know how paper's made. Paper's made of a sheen. What's that big? Five years old. Well, it's a plastic boiled and then cut, cut into very thin strips. I think paper is made in a big machine about that big. People make it nice and flat, even flatter than it came out of the machine, for people to draw on and write on. Well, kidding apart, the production of paper and board has gone through a revolutionary process lately. The Egyptians, who first started making the stuff some 6,000 years ago, would have a shock if they could see its manufacture today. And so might you. Here, at DRG's Nash Mills near Hemel Hempstead, Hertfordshire, is housed one of Europe's most modern paper-making centres. Every week, hundreds of tonnes of wood pulp are delivered to the mill. The mill was established by that great 18th century scientist and inventor, John Dickinson. Now, the company which he started is part of the multinational Dickinson Robinson Group. DRG. Today, paper is made from a mixture of pulps imported to Britain from many parts of the world. The pulps arrive at Nash Mill in a semi-processed state, delivered in bales of large sheets like very thick blotting paper. The bales are then loaded onto a conveyor belt and fed into a giant water-filled hydropulper, which breaks up the pulp sheets in a violent whirling motion. gallons of water are agitated with the mix, which is formulated from various types of pulps, depending on the finished product required. Within 15 minutes, it's reduced to a porridge-like substance called half star. At Nash Mills, Derek Alford is in charge of this vital first stage. Well, after all that violent agitation, the half stuff is then pumped into a holding chest. To me, at this stage, it rather looks like Technicolor porridge. It feels warm and soggy, and at this point, 94% of it is water. Dyes are then added at just the right quantity to obtain the Vanguard Daffodil Shade that we're making today. The wet pulp is then pumped through the refiners where the fibre is broken down and bruised according to whatever grade of paper or board we might be making that day. Chemicals are then added to affect the strength and smoothness of the paper these additives include china clay and rosin size. One of the latest developments of Nash Mill is the installation of a million pound computer system. The new system is one of the most sophisticated in Europe. Next, the mix, now diluted to 99 parts water to one part fibre, is pumped through the cleaners. 
These remove any traces of sand, dirt or foreign particles and screen out any contaminants. The pulpy mix is then ready for the last stage in its transformation into paper. The paper making machine is enormous, the length of 20 buses. Controlled by computer, the pulp flows onto a continuous nylon mesh. This moves endlessly forward at a speed of up to 350 meters a minute. A side-to-side -side vibrating motion helps to knit together the fibers. Much of the water is drained and sucked away through the wires, but it isn't wasted. It simply goes back through the system to dilute even more pulp. The pulp, by now a semi-formed sheet, then passes under the dandy roll, which presses and smooths any upstanding fibers. It's Eddie Mushens who takes charge of this wet end of the production line. The dandy roll is also used for putting on laid lines and watermarks such as you find in three candlesticks and the watermark, which is in Croxley script. The sheet, or the web as we call it, is then picked up on an endless felt blanket and carried through three controlled presses, which squeezes out approximately 50% of the water that is left in the sheet. This water which is drained off is not actually wasted. Along with trimmings from the edge of the wet sheet, it is pumped through a filter, which we call a sable, and is then recycled back into the system. Back to the main production line. From the felt blankets, the sheet has to pass around a series of steam-heated iron cylinders to get it really dry. Moisture is evaporated from the paper in clouds of steam. A coating of starch size, made from potatoes or maize, is then added. This helps to give a smooth surface to the paper and also increases its surface strength. Eventually, the paper has a moisture content of between 6 and 7%. Towards the end of the machine, the paper runs through calendar rolls. These are steel rollers which determine the paper's thickness and create its desired finish, on a scale from rough to glossy. This computerized scanner makes the last checks to the finished paper. Is it the right weight? The right moisture? The right density? The computer knows it all and tells all on the visual display unit. The paper or board is then wound onto jumbo reels, weighing up to six tons each. Next, the reels are slit and rewound onto smaller, more manageable ones. This computerized reel, costing half a million pounds, slits and reels at a phenomenal rate. The paper flies through at 1,200 meters a minute, producing up to 50 reels an hour. The reel size, which previously had to be adjusted manually, is now automatically programmed by the computer. Once slit and reeled, the reels then split and go on a musical mystery tour. Large sheets are cut on what's known as a folio size precision cutter, capable of accepting four reels at a time. Les Sturman looks after this end of the paper process. Any sheet that doesn't measure up exactly is automatically rejected by the machine.
Once these sheets are cut and counted, they're wrapped automatically, almost by magic. This machine, called a Wrapmatic, packs and seals the sheets into a waterproof wrapper. These are then stacked onto a pallet and then taken to the stockroom or placed into the dispatch area. In the past, it took two workers over 33 hours to produce the same amount of work this machine can do in eight hours. The cutting, counting and boxing of A4 size sheets is also an art to behold. From the moment this white bond paper started its life as a fibrous mass of pulp, to the time it makes its debut on your office desk, it's untouched by human hand. Every day, around 60 tonnes of paper flows through this machine and robotically turns out 26,000 reams of famous name brands, boxed, sealed and ready to be delivered. The mill manufactures one or other of these papers and boards 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But each time the production of a new brand begins, the paper left over from the previous production has to be removed. It isn't wasted though. Instead, this generated broke, as it's called, goes off for a side-splitting experience. This is Danger Knife and with a force of 2,900 pounds per square inch, it can slice through a one-ton reel of broke in half a minute. Just watch. Afterwards, the cut-up broke is lifted away and recycled into the paper making process. At DRG, nothing is wasted. Each year, about 30,000 tonnes of paper and board leave Nash Mills in a fleet of lorries. They cover an average of nearly half a million miles a year, delivering to customers throughout the United Kingdom. Four-fifths of the loads are delivered as sheets, and the rest are conveyed on reels for printers. So, now do you know how paper and board are made? <laughs> pulp goes into the hydropulper. Dyes are added. It then goes through the refiners, and chemicals are put in. The cleaners are next, and then a big machine. Under the dance well, and onto a felt blanket through very hot cylinders to make it dry. Then through the size prep and the calendars too. The computer gives the final check. The paper's cut up and then it goes away to shops and places. I should be over my dinner now. <laughs>